Poetry Slam. Poetry Slam is a spoken word competition where student poets take stage, perform original works in three minutes or less, and find the five judges that would judge them. There are three rounds total, second round being an elimination round, third round determining our top three winners that will go on to Orange County District Slam, being hosted at, here at Edgewater on May the 13th. As courtesy, please snap, don't clap. Let's try it, okay? Roses are red, violets are blue. Okay? If you don't like me, you'll still be my boo. Okay, thanks for the snaps. Um, shut up all phones and please put them up. If security catches you, they will kick you out. <coughs> These students are brave enough to come up here to take stage, so please show them your love. Let's begin our first poem. Our sacrificial, Miss Martin. Sacrificial is a poet that is willing to spill first blood. In other words, to start the slam. Here's Miss Martin. Give snaps for Miss Martin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way we have treated you. Sorry for not standing up sooner and healing you. Sorry that we have not taken care of you. How can we call this planet our home? Yet greedily use up natural resources provided to us, polluting our water, land, and air, then acting like we care. Every day we lose 80,000 acres of tropical rainforest, significantly degrading another 80,000 acres every day on top of that. Along with this loss of degradation, we lose 135 plant, animals, and insect species every day, some 50,000 species a year, as the rainforest falls by our own hands. According to the United Nations organization, this decade alone, tropical deforestation rates are 8.5% higher than the 1990s prior. Most of, our air, most of our air pollution we cause are results from burning fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, natural gases, and gasoline, just to produce electricity and power our vehicles in these cities. An average American breathes two gallons of air per minute, which averages around 3,400 gallons of air each day. The number of Americans every day die to air, due to air pollution is above 50,000. Staggering numbers, I would say. Outdoor air pollution ranks in the top 10 killers of Earth. Is this stating how we see our self-worth? By 2050, six million people will die per year due to air polluted air. The most hazardous pollu pollutants are released in the air are in less from water and land together. This is just too much to bear. Water is our life-sustaining gift, yet we have caused such a great rift. The fix needs to be swift. Information from Conserve Energy states how we dump 14 billion pounds of garbage into our oceans every year. A staggering number that makes me want to shed tears. In America, 40% of our rivers and 46% of our lakes are polluted and considered unhealthy for swimming, fishing, and aquatic life. 15 million children under the age of five die each year because of diseases caused by drinking polluted water. We need to change this slaughter. I'm sorry. Sorry for how, hum how hum humanity has abused you. Sorry we have only used you. I'm sorry that I'm only one voice, a voice that wants others to hear that there are still quite a few of us that do care. With hope and help, we can make a quick change about and make amends for what we've thrown out. This poem is called, Letter to the Parents. What do you really know about me? You really think you know me? Huh, that's funny because I, as I recall, you blame your mistake on me, yet you tell me to be responsible like the adult I'm coming to be. See, that's funny because you think that you can teach me what to do, telling me not to be like you don't do this and don't do that, that you messed up in life, and you're still trying to fix it, but when I look at it right, you still go to that bottle for help. Did you know 
The truest parents are supposed to be our biggest example, our shoulder to lean on. What do you really know about me? Did you know that I love to draw? Because I pay attention to every detail around me, just like how you have the burn mark of a cigarette on your right index finger, yet you tell me you quit. And what about when you come home late from your so-called job smelling of sex? And what about that makeup that covers the bruises and the scars? And that smile, oh that glowing smile, how well it hides all those tears that you shed late at night when you think no one is listening. But here's the thing, did you also know that I love to play on that PS4 you bought me just so I would shut up with stupid questions? Stupid questions about adult, and I'm sorry you're supposed to teach me to become an adult. Did you know that I love to write because my world is such a hell that I have to write my own world, a world where everything is as it should be? Did you know that I love to write music and listen to it? Because I learned to drown out all the screaming that goes on between you two at home, the pushes against the walls, the ripping and close, the shattering of glasses and cans, and the shattering of windows and doors. But you're too busy that you don't know this, because you're too busy still trying to get to know yourself. <coughs> because as we grow up, we all just want you to accept us and learn who we are with pride. Learn who we really are on the inside, no matter who we are, gay or straight, strong, strong or buff, fast or slow, it doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we look like, we just want you to accept us. So here's one last thing. To teach is to show and not to command because we just want you to let us evolve and not to mold us. Because life is too short to go through. You can't just go through it. You have to live and enjoy life. Because it's too short to lose it to negativity and stress. So just take a moment and get to know us. Snacks for the poet. Next up, Caleb. He's gonna make you forget about those red towers, best around men. How could you ever doubt this? Got a full life surfing and next to this. You look like a fat fish, you're just a founder. And but at least my talent, head and powers, fight has been set around this. Your mind is yeah. dangerous, because you found it. Cause I'm a threat, you look stressed about it. Heard you at Mercury, I go on like Trevor, you might keep your religion, my, your face is all personal disaster. I catch it, I'll pass it out to you, the coastal egg castle. Your religion doesn't matter, I do the good lady, my salad is deadly. These bars make up my pockets are heavy. Just know you ain't ready, just know you ain't ready, my words can get messy. The only place you should be cooked like all these cold black machetes. And the end solution, are you white people or just useless? No team, but I got this double stop hit you up twice in his deuces. And you ain't gonna do this, challenge me and my style, that's foolish. I'm the word master, you just do it, and day I'm gonna stay, so go keep it two cents. I do this, who you playing with? Not with me, my phones are my artillery. I watch y'all, you ain't doing nothing, so like a mountain, you can't rock with me. I be around when I win blows, you can tell, cause it be so ominous. My tops, the top spot's like an icy path and I slide, and I slide it in like hockey bucks. Your BS, I miss that, like most people, I know how to act. A quiet bitch, I tip toe, but when I rap, I spit that fire though. But watch how it, watch how it break it down, my flow, shit, you my happy play, won't, won't, won't see me playing around. Wait till, wait till my collar comes out, I'ma end up right back in the spot, your head will make a style. So by now you, you should have gotten a message. I'm the illest legendary that you ever forget it. Uh, I owe you no apology. I don't apologizing for loving the skin I'm in, and I don't apologizing for not fitting into your man-made cave you have tried to trap my people in, and I don't apologize for escaping your communistic hands, and why should I apologize for loving the thickness of my eyebrows, lips, and hips. Why should I apologize for my melody for being black, African-American, African, or Caribbean? And I am not created by the same God that America so-called trusted because my God created him is not self-entitled, self-groups, white men, black men. And you turn, up, you turn us against one another, corrupt our minds. We think only black lives matter when all lives matter. Death has no color and it singles no one else. So how can you say that black lives should be the only thing that we care about? Why 
should I apologize to my melanin for being black, African American, African or Caribbean, and for every Quandarius, Tanika, Don Rico, for every name that seems ghetto or unpronounceable. Don't apologize for knowing your worth, then. Don't apologize for walking with your head up high and not home, not home down low. And I don't apologize for wanting to attend college, to expand my knowledge, to teach you something that you didn't know. I don't apologize. And why should I? Why should I have to apologize for being ashamed of breaking the statistical racial barrier that we have built hand by hand, year after year? The very barrier that separates ignorance and knowledge, love and hate. Black and white, the poor and the rich. Why should I apologize? Tell me why I should apologize and just accept this corrupted world we once called our society. Why should I apologize for being, for my melanin, for being black, African American, African or Caribbean? Shouldn't you be apologizing to me? Just to, just to get a degree, I have to pay thousands of dollars in tuition and fees, and shouldn't you be apologizing to me? Because based upon my color, my race, my ethnicity, I am defined, categorized as a minority. Shouldn't you be apologizing to me? And you forgive me for I will not apologize or conform to this world's absurd, absurd abnormalities. I am black history, and that's who I remain to be. I can't be like anyone else, and no one can be like me because I'm a carbon copy, and I suggest you don't apologize. I have, don't apologize for what you have no control over. God has created something beautiful, something he, seen, he deemed unique. So be like me, an unapologetic black queen. Today was like any other day when I heard your name, I froze. I saw it written on my Facebook status. A mutual friend has just spoke. And I wonder if those mutual friends know that I didn't have a sip. I took a long shower after that. My hand was feeling so bad that I dropped the shampoo bottle twice and the conditioner three times, and halfway through lathering my body in some vanilla scented wash, I could no longer tell the difference between my own flooding tears or the water. I hiccuped back sobs as my body wrenched forward, dizzy from the memory that I had tried so hard to forget. And huh, sometimes I forget that everything truly does stay lodged up in our heads. And the steaming hot water fell over in my body, and I could feel your rough calloused hands again, and they burned more than the fiery water that was hitting me. The memory of your fingers trailed to the tips of where my shirt was, and I nearly cried out the words that I had that day. Stop. This is not what I want. I thought no was enough. But my voice went hoarse, and I didn't quite understand what a sudden flashback. Was the mutual friends really a source? Yet no matter how much I blocked it out, I could still sense the weight and pressure being pressed against me. I could hear myself whimpering and shaking my head as if it were happening all over again. And when I stepped out of the shower, I could still imagine your teeth as they gaze against my lips and attempt to hush my words, my plea, the way I disagree. And even when my heart stopped pounding, my voice came back in full force, my reflection staring back at me from the mirror, hanged and deep. In the reflection of my bloodshot eyes, I saw him. And God, how I wish I could forget that day. But my mind wanders. Do our three mutual friends know that I didn't have a say? Dandarika Denise Gibson is my name. It's kind of hard for some to say. They ask me why my mom had to be so complicated and ghetto, like my name is meaningless because it's not simple. You see, if my name was Ashley or Brittany or Alexis or even Dimitri, would that be okay? Because society has a way of only accepting things that are all the same. You see, over the years, I was forced to shorten my name to just one letter because I was tired of hearing people stutter. Don, Don Dre, Don Dre, just call me D. Because clearly you cannot pronounce the history that is buried under each letter. My name is Don Derrica. I was named after my father, whose name is spelled just like mine. He's only missing an R. It was supposed to be an O at the end, though, pronounced Don Derrico. But see, the doctors back then couldn't understand why my grandmother would name her child after two of the world's youngest kings. You see, my name is not just ghetto. It carries history that is unbelievable. The, hard, the hardest part for me is, why did it happen? Ugh, wait. The scariest part, it is harder for me to get a job because once they see my name, their decision is already halfway made. All they have to look at next is my race. Then they automatically see this trap queen, this ghetto fiend, but that is not me. Because my name will never appear on a Coca-Cola bottle, why does it happen to me? It's harder for me. I wrote this, I wrote this for everybody who was tired of hearing others stumble, stumble and stutter. Hold your head up high and correct. My name is Don Derrica. And if that is too complicated and ghetto, I don't mind you calling me D.
I was born on December 6th, and I believe that makes me Sagittarius. Not so. I'm 6'1", I weigh 137 pounds, I suck at math, I was never really good at tying my shoes, and I'm a sucker for a girl with wild hair and an even wilder imagination. I like Dr. Pepper. A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Surprisingly enough, I used to be quite shy, but now I'm often loud in places where I should be quiet, and I'm quiet in places where I should still be loud. And you see, I was born head first, and I've been falling that way ever since. I've been told I get pretty bad hugs. People say that it feels like I'm trying to escape, and sometimes it's because I am. Secretly, I get really nervous every time someone gets close enough to hear me breathe. I have this odd fascination with things like dreams and feelings. I assume it's because I find myself dedicating time to things that will only last a few moments. I'm guessing that's why I tend to fall in love with women who will never love me back. Uh, to be honest, I think it's safer that way. See, relationships, they often remind me that I'm not afraid of falling or of heights, but I'm truly scared of what happens the moment that my body hits the ground. I'm also kind of clumsy. You see, yesterday I tripped over my self-esteem. I landed on my pride and it shattered like most of your iPhones out there. <laughs> now I can't even tell it's trying to give me a compliment. I've never been in the military, but I have this purple heart and a medal of honor. I got them from beating myself up over things that I can't fix and carrying what's left behind to safety behind these walls. Now, I know this may sound very weird, but sometimes I wonder what my bed sheets would say about me when I'm not old. I wonder what the curtains would do if they found out about all the shady things I've done behind their backs. I've got a toilet, I got a toilet that's overflowing with really, really crappy mistakes, and the grave right in my closet, I'm afraid that if I let you see my skeletons, Go grind my bones into powder and get oh so high off my father. <laughs> Hi. My name is Anthony. Or uh Anthony as ladies like to call. I enjoy making music, stargazing, and laughing for absolutely no reason at all. But I don't allow myself to cry as often as I need to. I have a soul of power confidence and I have a battery operated smile. My hobbies include editing my life story, hiding behind my anxiety, and trying to convince my shadow that I'm someone worth following. I don't know much about religion, but I do know my dream version of heaven is full of music. I know God listens to my heartbeat on his iPad. It reminds him that me and him, we've got some serious work. Darkness in a long corner side like some nightmare. Too much of each can possibly kill you, but a balance of both make me feel content and ready to deal with people. Yet, when I put others before me, I start to crumble while I'm putting people's pieces together. For each one of theirs, I connect with my disconnect, and it's this cycle that's been going on and on for what feels endless. Always listening to others, but when it comes to me, I'm all of a sudden deaf and I cannot hear my own thoughts. I cannot think and I cannot fathom what's going on with me, but I'm fine. Well, at least that's what I tell everyone. The more I put it out in the atmosphere, the more fine I feel. I don't exactly know my issues, but I know their issues. I ponder every night trying to figure out why I'm blind to my feelings and my emotions. I am feeling, but for months I felt nothing but numb, so am I really feeling? I've been trying to go with the flow, and this flow has been rigid and jagged with more lows than ever. Every obstacle I overcome, there's another one waiting to face me, just like the numerous amount of others after that one. There's a purpose for everything, and the pain is unavoidable, coming in different forms, from emotional to physical. I feel it, but lately I felt nothing but desensitized. So am I feeling, though? Am I really feeling, though? The feeling of not feeling only takes one, but so far I miss the waterworks, I miss the pain, I miss being in the know and not the unknown. But for most of all, I miss answering with no, I don't know what's wrong with me. My thoughts come in different shapes and sizes, from lines to curves to blocks to space, while you're just a parasite eating away at my worth and emotionally degrading me. These poems are full of comments symbolizing that there's more to wait for the beginning of the period, ending everything I've ever worked for. My nerves feel detached, everything feels disconnected, yet all I really feel is the vibration in my throat. From the words coming out of my mouth, slipping in your ear, hopefully not slipping. Dear family, please don't read my poem. Don't tell me the way I choose to express myself is right or wrong, don't give me a three for trying, don't give me a four so I have to walk empty handed out the door and don't you dare give me a five for my poem made you cry. Just simply don't rate me. Don't place my life experience on a scale, don't measure my level of pain by what you think is enough for someone like me to sustain. I don't care about your comments, I will tell you when you can shove your score paper. I'm giving you a raw version of me and that right there is a favorite because every poet has their own flavor. See, mine have this cherry, because everybody knows the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I mean, what would it qualify mm. you tell me that my passion for poetry is greater than a life span of poet next to me? Stop making us compete. Her shoes do not fit me, and that's okay, because the best part about spoken word is every poem has its own beat, its own abstract flow of creativity. So go ahead, give me a three. Your numbers don't mean nothing to me, because home is where the heart is in your how do you save someone who doesn't want to be saved? Because I loved you with every inch of my body. My hands need to be intertwined with yours.
yours. My eyes didn't know that you were still alive, and now I'm deep inside your room, surrounded by your demons, with the thought that you could never love or no one ever loved you. How do you save someone who doesn't want to be saved? How do you care about someone who hates every inch of themselves? When I see you, I would freeze, and my heart would stop until it knew your beat. But now I turn my head, not even wanting to get a glimpse of Medusa snakes. I had to walk away from you. I was standing in your shadow. I was trying to, I was fighting your demons and mine. I was trying to be your own personal Wonder Woman, but instead I was being Harley Quinn because I can't save you. I'm barely saving myself. I love you, but I have to walk away. And I still need you, but you're so stuck in your constant need for artificial love and not the real thing. How do you save someone who doesn't want to be saved? How do you love someone who doesn't even know the meaning? There will always be part of me that will be drawn to you, like a moth to a flame. I am a fool for you, but it's time to walk away. Mm -hmm. Why can't I go back to the beginning? Back before I made the three biggest mistakes of my life. Why can't I destroy you? I have the willpower, don't I? Or you take that from me when you took everything from me. But how could, be, how could it be my everything when my everything was you? See, when I realized that you weren't the one for me, I fell, I broke. I had to watch you be happy in my most vulnerable time. I had to watch you while I was forced to pick up the pieces of my heart, forced to live in this hell, forced to build walls around my heart. We obviously had two different meanings of love because just like with your Earhart, I crashed and no one ever took the time to find me. Woo! But, but let me be, let me sit down, because I'm obviously being overdramatic. But that's the problem. I can't. What was the point? What was the point of all of this? If I had just sat and thought about all the horrible things you did to me, it would make Stephen King's books look like child play. If I just sat and thought it would make both these things like the happiest book ever read. If I just sat and thought it would put Edgar Allan Poe to shame. If I just sat and thought about all the horrible things you did to me, I just went to the Sahara Desert to an ocean. If only I had sat and thought. I would be running around in circles. I'd be happy. And try as I might, I can try destroying you, erasing you, but nothing. Nothing will ever destroy you from my mind. See, if I just sat and thought, I'd think of my life before you, back to my beginning. What's the point? What should I do? Will life ever change? What's the truth? Society still oppresses my mother, taking my sisters and killing our brothers. In a cell, they're all alone, who knows the truth because we don't. Beat and murder, kill and abuse, cover it up, no justice pursued. What's the point? Day by day, killing us slowly, but in a quick pace. I'm afraid of the people who are supposed to defend because they're killing us off like there's no end. Don't want to stop. This is a trend. Just another hashtag in an angry by friend. Why do they feel the need to murder just because of our skin color? And then they do these wicked things, kill us dead, and then say cheese. How do you survive while being black? When you're walking alone, watch your back. Don't wear a hood, keep your hands up. Walk slowly, don't be in a rush. Don't carry a beverage and they look like a gun. Don't whistle about women and don't you dare run. This generation is in danger. These situations are no strangers. We've seen it all before. Beating us down and lifting the tree. Our bodies touched in gasoline. Mm. Set on fire and watch this burn. Saying, when will these niggas have learned? Mm. Stop being black. Especially in America, this nation is built by black hands rules were made for the white skin. Why did they take us from our home? Who gave you the right? And now we can't even fight? Saying our obligations are dramatic and wrong. Telling us everything isn't about race, but we see this crap every other day. Little black boy playing at the park with a toy gun. Cops pull up. Bam, bam, he's done. His entire future gone with the drop of a dime. And for what? Was he committing a crime? You want to tell me this isn't about race, but if he was a little white boy, he'd still be alive today. Black lives matter. It's what I scream and I keep screaming it until I can't breathe. With my hands held high to the sky and tears running from my eyes. Black lives matter is what I cry. Why do my brothers have to die? Black lives matter. Do you hear my pleas? Black lives matter. Don't you agree? Black lives matter. Say it with me. Black lives matter. It's music. Enthusiastically an illusion what comes from inside which means we have to abide by the constitutional rule. 
Now, when I say constitutional, it doesn't mean some political rule that you can ball up and leave its memories. I want these to stay with you through your life's industry as if they would never leave because this is a part of you. And what I have always learned is that one plus one equals two. Now, this is a Garuda family building off of three major leagues, making it hard to succeed in 2016. She's waiting by the phone because of me, this beautiful woman that I want to see. She's waiting by the phone just to hear from me. When she hears my voice, she gets weak in the knees. I want to be her forever, but I can't do that right now. I want to give her all of me, but I don't know how. She's waiting by the phone. I know she is, anticipating the call, ready to be my all. Her one and only for all to see, how happy she could truly be. She's waiting by the phone, yet I'm hesitant to call, knowing I haven't given her my all. You see, I left her to be with another part of me, and now she cries when she thinks of me. She's waiting by the phone just for it to ring, and to feel the happiness I will bring. I know she's the one, because together we have so much fun. How can I find a remedy in singing this melody to let her know she is the one for me? She's waiting by the phone while she's sitting there at home. What a fool I've been, telling her I just want to be her friend. She's waiting by the phone in a solemn tone, knowing she's no longer waiting for me, as she's found one to replace me. She's waiting by the phone, what a fool I am. I let go of the one that was best for me. Knowing she had to let me go, I just want her to know how much she meant to me. She's waiting by the phone with a smile on her face, ready for the one that took my place. I'm waiting by the phone just to hear from her. Tears fill my eyes as I know she's no longer allowing me to try to be her one and only guy. What a mess I had made as the sun begins to fade. Waiting by the phone is so hard to do when you know it's not. Black and white. Two worlds that will unite. Seeing a white girl wearing braids, you immediately get enraged because cornrows are not a thing, but blacks are the ones that made. Respect hip hop. Rap is starting to rot. It's cool to not spit about how you took a hit and how you just met a chick. It was fine and thick, but what about respect for when I was called rap? It doesn't matter not how you succeed to be success, but it matters how many girls you can say you took the bed. It doesn't matter that you worked for years or that you won it, but it matters what number you are on the top 100. You see, we don't have a good, so we are about this hood. Walking down the street and worried that we'll meet a cop or a police that'll bring us to our knees with arrows on the teeth. So don't get mad at me when I say we are equal, or when I say the generation is becoming a sequel, or when I don't talk about other minorities who put up a fight, because this poem is about being black and being white. Black and white, I say it twice. I understand if we don't unite, that doesn't make it right. Black. They say this is our time. They say enjoy life to the fullest. They say you only live once. They say to seize every opportunity. They say to follow your dreams and they'll come to you. Well, I say they don't know me. I don't come from a land of opportunity. I came from a land of take what you get because life don't get any better than this. My life's all about accept what you can handle and be content that you have a roof over your head. They say dreams come true. They say that anyone can succeed. They say life's too short to be anything but happy. They say the world's an open map. Well, I say they haven't met me. I dream big, but get little. I try my best to succeed, but get kicked down by bureaucracy. Every road I travel circles me back. I say that I walk, let them walk a day in my shoes. There's quite a few to choose. Since the day I was drugged and raped, the day I was beat because not enough food on his plate, the day he tried to choke the life out of me, the day I held a razor wanting to bleed. They say all you need to do is believe. They say live like there's no tomorrow. They say we all have equal rights. They say to be yourself and it'll be all right. They obviously know. They do not know anything about me. I come from a low-income family where there's a struggle to, to survive in society. Even after I move out, living from paycheck to paycheck fills life with doubts. Who are they and how do they matter to me? 
I make my own path in society, plowing through life trash, picking out the real moments I want to last, not listening to their deceit as I know my place is not to accept the defeat. I will rise above the bar, I'm not really sure how far, Knowing that I am accepted where I am and I can make it the best that I can, you see, I don't need them to feed me their lines and their lies as I can maneuver through life just fine. Accepting my struggles, my hurts, my ups and my downs, life is what I make of it in the place where I see fit. I like being me, not part of high society. They say, they say education is the road to success, right? Well, I don't know if education is the same. Maybe that saying is too old and outdated because nowadays students care more about their grades than what's actually going in their brains. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, please sit back and let me explain. You see, nowadays education is just a game. We leave high school, we leave high school with a diploma and raise it proud in the high, but at the same time we leave high school and don't know a thing about life. We leave high school and don't know the first thing about paying bills, filing taxes, or raising a baby without a teenage day. You see, our history books have to have holes because there are many stories that go untold. Allen May Collins, Richard Dixon, Malcolm X, but nobody wants to talk about that because they know it won't be on the next test. So clearly these students could care less. Our teachers fail to remind us about real life and things that go on every day but are just turned to a blind eye. Maybe they don't realize this is the foundation to our life. They say education is the road to success. Maybe my generation is just a mess. Our schools have turned into fashion shows where students wear no clothes just to see who's looking. And if that helps them get an A, I'm going to just say, there are teachers who are taking advantage of these children who are just giving themselves away for a class participation grade. Woo. But at what point did this thing called education just up and change? Because there was a time where students had to pick up a book and read, but now it's like technology has taken over our ways and turned us all into slaves. Facebook addicts, Snapchat junkies, Twitter fiends, it's like we're being blinded or maybe we're just hiding from reality. We're losing focus and letting this thing called technology control us. Even if we have to go back to those days when teachers had to pat us on our backsides to remind us how to behave, our generation has to find a way. They're building jails every day waiting on a child to become an inmate and we're never reminded. That's how they get paid. All I'm saying is there has to be a change for my generation in the system we call education. God, you've given me the strength to get through the day, yet when nighttime hits, I feel weak. Going through the motions of overcoming minor obstacles, if, even though the major one that I have yet to climb over sits there and stares me dead in the face at nighttime. Never in the form of forms of red skin, even though that's what these people are deep down within. Snakes, venomous, affecting you with words and nonverbals, biting you with their days, even with their existence, penetrating you with negativity that's disintegrating my veins as the days count down, leading me closer to an early demise. Check me and God, do I have to be pure, be infinite? No matter how many showers I take, I feel like I can't ever wash away my sins. No matter how hard I scrub my smooth skin, the emotional dirt I throw on me has been hardened, and I have no clue how to remove it. No matter how many times the liquid drops and better with emotion flow down my tear ducts, down to my cheeks, to my neck, my face is still filled with bumps containing the past that are still constantly building from both first. Never in the procession of red, never in the procession of red, but we do people and create tears want shed. We threw people and leads me to their bed and continues to ruin me in, even though I've been hooked. Stolen. Everything's stolen. At first you judged us, won't let us be. Our culture was weird, ghetto, and ugly. Everything we did, it was crap. But later on, you took our crap. It started way, way back then. African queens and African men. Stolen from a place we called home, you took us right off our throne. To a world we didn't know chained us up and we were sold. Over 400 years we stayed slaves, and finally you, in those ways, declared us free for the price we paid. Segregation, the rules were made. From old Negro spirituals to singing the blues and rock and roll, we did that too. It was our way to speak our mind and our music, our shine. But you see, it was took and changed to what they called hip. They stole from us once again, Chuck Berry's music was the first rock then. Elvis came and took his shine, stole his music like, sorry, it's mine. But now you see, it's still the same. The culture that they claim was vain. Mocked our hair and how we dress, but now suddenly it's the best. Our big monkey lips, you do anything to have them. Now freaks your dear ear, and now you want to grab them. Hip hop came from the black strokes like jazz and blues, but guess what, they're taking it too. Our style, our music, and everything we know, you know it's true, and you know it's so. They care about our culture. They love our culture, but don't care about the pain. Everything stolen was ours to claim. Guys here.
I was born on December 6th, and I believe that makes me a Sagittarius. Enough said. Yeah. I'm 6'1", I weigh 137 pounds, I suck at math, I've never really been that good at tying my shoes, and I'm a sucker for a girl with wild hair and an even wilder imagination. Mm. I like Dr. <laughs> Pepper a lot, like a lot, a lot. I'm often loud in places where I should be quiet, and I'm still quiet in places where I should be loud, and you see, I was born head first and I've been falling that way ever since. I've been told I get pretty bad hugs, and people say it feels like I'm trying to escape. <laughs> to be honest, I sometimes I am. <laughs> Secretly, I get really nervous every time someone gets close enough to hear me breathe. I have this odd fascination with things like dreams and feelings. I assume it's because I usually find myself dedicating time to things and people that will only last a few moments. I'm guessing that's why I tend to fall in love with people and never love back. To be honest, I think it's safe for that way. See, relationships, they often remind me that I'm not afraid of heights or falling, but that I'm truly scared of what happens the moment that my body hits the ground. I'm also kind of clumsy. Yesterday, I tripped over my self-esteem. I landed on my pride, and it shattered like most of your iPhones out there. Now, I can't even tell they're trying to give me a compliment. I've never been in the military, but I have this Purple Heart and Medal of Honor. I got them from beating myself up over things that I can't fix and carrying what's left back to safety behind these walls. Now, I know this may sound a little weird, so bear with me, but Sometimes, I wonder what the bed sheets would say about me when I'm not around. I wonder what the curtains would do if they found out about all the shady things I've done behind their backs. And I've got a toilet that's overflowing some really, really crappy mistakes. And if you ever go to my closet that, I'm afraid if I let you see my skeletons, you'll grind my bones into powder gets oh so high off my fault lines. I typically apologize for these walls, for my awkwardness, for my anger, for my pain. Sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. Hi. My name is Anthony, or uh, it's the latest one, Anthony. <laughs> I enjoy making music, stargazing, laughing for absolutely no reason at all. But I don't allow myself to cry as often as I need to. To be honest, I have a solar powered confidence and a battery operated spot. My hobbies include editing my life story, hiding behind my anxiety, and trying to convince my shadow I am truly someone worth following. Now, I don't know much about religion, but I do know my dream version of having is full of music. I know God listens to my heartbeat on his iPod. It reminds him that me and him have still got work to do. Thank you. I owe you no apology. I don't apologize until I don't apologize for loving the skin I've been in. I don't apologize apologize for not fitting into your man-made cave you have tried to trap my people in it. I don't apologize for escaping your common use of cans. Why should I apologize for escaping? Why should I apologize for the thickness of my eyebrows, lips, and hips in? Why should I apologize for my melanin being black, African-American, African, or Caribbean? I am not created by the same God that America so-called trusted. Because my God created humans. Not the self-entitled subgroups, white men, black men we have created. And you turned us against one another. You corrupted our minds. We think only black lives matter when all lives matter. That has no color in a single no one out. So how can you say that black lives should be the only thing that we care about? Don't be stuck in your ignorance. <laughs> Why should I apologize for my melody? Why should I apologize for being black, African American, African or Caribbean? And for every Quandarius, Tanika, every Don Dorica, every name that's deemed ghetto or unpronounceable, don't apologize. In, don't apologize for knowing your worth. Then don't apologize for walking with your head held high in, not hung down low. And I don't apologize for wanting to attend college and spend my knowledge and teach you something that you didn't know. I don't apologize. And why should I? Why should I apologize or be ashamed of breaking the statistical racial barrier that we have built my head? year after year. The very barrier that separates ignorance and knowledge, love and hate, black and white, the poor and the rich. Why should I apologize and just accept this corrupt world we once called our society and why should I apologize for my melody being black, African, African American, and Caribbean? Why should I apologize? Shouldn't you be apologizing to me? Just to, just to get a degree, I have to pay thousands of dollars in tuition and fees, and shouldn't you be apologizing to me? Because based upon my color, my race, my ethnicity, I am defined and I am categorized as a minority. Shouldn't you be apologizing to me? And do forgive me, for I will not apologize or perform to this world's absurd abnormalities. I am 
black history, and that's who I will remain to be. Can't nobody be like me because I'm an original. I am not a carbon copy. So I suggest you don't apologize. Don't apologize for what you have no control over. Don't apologize for what God has created, something beautiful, something that he deemed unique. So be like me, an unapologetic black queen. Yeah. seven years now and working with a great amount of uh, students that have come through this program and we have some wonderful students this year that have really worked hard so I hope that uh, you enjoy the show to be able to break the ice for them so they get rid of some of their nerves while they're sitting awake I'm gonna start with a poem called sorry earth I'm sorry sorry for the way we have treated you sorry for not standing up sooner and healing you Sorry that we have not taken care of you. How can we call this planet our home, yet greedily use up the natural resources provided to us, polluting our water, land, and air, then acting like we care? Every day we lose 80,000 acres of tropical rainforest, significantly degrading another 80,000 acres every day on top of that. Along with this loss and degradation, we lose 135 plants, animals, insect species every day some 50,000 species a year as the forest falls by our hands. According to the United Nations organization, this decade alone, tropical deforestation rates are 8.5% higher than during the 1990s prior. Most of our air pollution we cause are results from burning fossil fuels such as coal, oil, natural gases and gasoline just to produce electricity and power our vehicles in these cities. An average American breathes two gallons of air per minute, which means around 3,400 gallons of air each day. The number of people who died in America every year due to air pollution is above 50,000. Staggering numbers, I would say. Outdoor air pollution ranks in the top 10 killers on Earth. Is this how we see our self-worth? By 2050, 6 million people will die per year due to polluted air. The most hazardous pollut pollutants are released in the air and less from water and land together. This is just too much for us to bear. Water is our life-sustaining gift, yet we cause such a great rip. The fix needs to be swift. Information from Conserve Energy states that we dump 14 billion pounds of garbage into our oceans every year. A staggering number that makes me want to shed tears. In America, 40% of our rivers and 46% of our lakes are polluted and considered unhealthy for swimming, fishing, and aquatic life. 15 million children under the age of 5 die every year because of diseases caused by polluted water. We need to change this slaughter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for how, how humanity has abused you. Sorry for how we've only used you. I'm sorry that I'm only one voice, a voice that wants others to hear, that there's still quite a few of us that care. With hope and help, we can make a quick change about and make amends for what we've grown out. I, I, I can't do this. I need my knife, the knife that I used to cut. The blood that runs down on my arms is because of you. Can't you see that I'm hurting? I will never see the light of day because the darkness of your soul covers it. I, I need my bottle. The same bottle that I used to guzzle down my pride, my feelings, my everything in order to make you happy. It's okay, go ahead. Come on, Kendra. You got it. Bye. Please stop. See, every time I hear your, your name, it's like a curse word to my heart, to my mind. Every time you touch me, it burns. It burns like the fire that used to burn inside for you. You swore on top of everything that you were a king, but last time I checked, kings were Noah and Brave, not little boys trying to play dress up. Oh. See, I, I need to be able to function without you without having to long for your touch, without 
having to kill myself in order to kill you without having to hear your lies. But, but why am I still talking? It's not like you're listening. You only wanted someone to fulfill your body's needs and it only took me, what, a couple of years to figure it out? See, I can see you're sitting in the audience right now. You're staring at me nervous. The same eyes that could pick out the weak girl from the crowd. The same eyes that could examine my heart, my soul, my mind. Your mouth can't find the words to say. The same mouth that could fill my head with empty promises. The same mouth that couldn't get off of me. See, your, your hands are sweaty now. The same hands that could find the time to mess up a perfect masterpiece but could never find the time to mold that masterpiece back together. I, I can never seem to grasp hold of you, but I'll never stop trying. See, I, I don't want you to leave, but at the same damn time, I want you out of my sight and out of my mind. I'll never be able to understand you, nor will I try to, because I can't. Kissing you is kind of like that. My hair stands on ends, and I get shocked when I touch your body. Mm. And I just want to tell you stupid things. Like, kissing you is like a bundle of kittens colliding with my face at 0.5 miles per hour. It's kind of like being shot with a dart gun made of hummingbirds that shoots darts made of hummingbirds. And your lips are so soft, they can't actually tell when you're touching. Mm. Like, Braiding hair underwater or napping under a blanket filled with rainbows and clouds and all the books you like to read. And if you were 300 pounds, if you were a 300 pound professional weightlifter and I was a Kia Sorento, you could drag me anywhere just for years. <laughs> Kissing you is patient and impossibly slow, like peeling paint off the wall with glittery stickers or cooking a turkey with just a light. What? You remind me of the time in sixth grade when Valeria Bonilla, she knows who she is, called me a freak face and stabbed me in the arm with a pencil. Because <laughs> kissing you is kind of like that, unhealthy, and we'll probably end in this video. But baby, bring on the facial scars and the lead poison. Because when you kiss me, it feels like you're dangling, dangling me off a bridge by my belt. You are every one of my black eyes. You're a semi truck, and I'm a turtle. Stuck out in the middle of the road, two broken legs, and a broken heart. Question is, will you run me over? Or will you pick me up and make me a road buddy? <laughs> Kissing you is like falling out of a 37 story window, exploding into a cloud of pigeons and reappearing on the ground with my mouth full of all of these dirty feathers. And when I can't kiss you, I try to find the static electricity in my apartment. I dig around the wall sockets with forts, I change light bulbs with my teeth, and weirdly enough, I make out with my toaster. <laughs> and I know we've only been seeing each other for a couple of weeks, but baby, when you kiss me, I can't remember my little name or which one of these is my wife for. So come over tonight. We'll shuffle around the apartment in our socks and we'll let our lips drift toward each other. Like take time. I owe you no apology. I don't apologize for loving the skin I'm in it. I don't apologize for not fitting into your man-made cave you have tried to trap my people in. And I don't apologize, I don't apologize for escaping your communistic hands in. Why should I apologize? Why should I apologize for the thickness of my eyebrows lips and hips in? Why should I apologize for my melanin for being black, African-American, African or Caribbean? I am not created by the same God that America so-called trust in. Because my God created humans, uh, not self-entitled subgroups, white men and black men, we have created and we turned our people against us. We turned us, one against, we turned us against one another and corrupted our minds. We think only black lives matter when all lives matter and death has no color and it singles no one out. So how can you sit here and tell me that black lives should be the only thing that we care about? I mean, don't be stuck in your ignorance. Why should I apologize for my melanin, for being black, African American, African, or Caribbean. And for every Quandarius, Kanika, Gondarika, for every name being ghetto or unpronounceable, don't apologize for knowing your work then. Don't apologize for walking with your head held high and not hung down low in. I don't apologize for wanting to go to college and I, I don't apologize for wanting to attend college and spend my knowledge and teach you something that you didn't know. I don't apologize. And why should I? Why should I have to apologize or be ashamed of breaking the statistical racial barrier that we have built by hand, year after year? 
the very barriers that separates ignorance and knowledge, love and hate, black and white, the poor and the rich. Why should I have to apologize? Just tell me why I should have to apologize and set this corrupt world we once called our society. Why should I apologize for my melody, for being black, African American, African or Caribbean? Shouldn't you be apologizing to me? Just to get a degree, I have to pay thousands of dollars in tuition and fees, and shouldn't you be apologizing to me because based upon my color, my race, my ethnicity, I'm defined and I'm categorized as a minority. Shouldn't you be apologizing to me? And don't forgive me, for I will not apologize for confront to this world's absurd abnormalities. I am black history, and that's who I will remain to be, because can't nobody be like me, because I'm original and I'm not a carbon copy. So I suggest you don't apologize, and don't apologize for what you have no control over, and God has created something that he deemed unique. So be like me. Unapology black, a black African, Queen. They say education is a road to success, right? Well, I don't know if education is the same. I don't think so. Turn it on. Hello? They say education is a road to success, right? Well, I don't know if education is the same. Maybe that saying is too old and outdated because nowadays students care more about their brain than what's actually going in their brain. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, please sit back and let me explain. You see, nowadays education is just a game. We leave high school with a diploma and raise it proud and high, but at the same time, we leave high school and don't know a thing about life. We leave high school and don't know the first thing about paying bills, the taxes, or raising a baby without a teenage daddy. <laughs> They say education is the road to success. They say education is the road to success. Well, maybe my generation is just a mess. You see, our schools have turned into fashion shows where students wear no clothes just to see who's looking. And if that helps you get an A, I'm going to just say, there are teachers who are taking advantage of these children who are just giving themselves away for a class participation grade. But it was one this thing called education just up and changed because there was a time when students had to pick up a book and read, but now it's like technology has took it up our way to turn us all into slaves. Facebook addicts, Snapchat junkies, Twitter fiends, it's like we're being blinded or maybe we're just hiding from reality. We're losing focus and letting this thing called technology control us. Yeah. Even if we have to go back to those days when teachers had to pat us on our backsides to remind us how to behave, our generation has to find a way. They're building jails every day waiting on a child to become an inmate and we're never reminded. That's how they get paid. All I'm saying is there has to be a... <laughs> What's the point? What should I do? Will life ever change? What's the truth? Society still oppresses my mother, taking our sisters and killing our brothers. In the cell, they're all alone who knows the truth because we don't. Beat and murder, kill and abuse, covering up my justice pursued. What's the point? Day by day, killing us slowly but in a quick pace. I'm afraid of the people who are supposed to defend because they're killing us off like there's no end. When will it stop? Is this a trend? Just another hashtag in an angry black friend. Why do they feel the name? Just because of our skin color. And then they do these wicked things, kill us dead and then say cheese. How do you survive while being black? When you're walking alone, watch your back. Don't wear a hood, keep your hands up. Don't whistle at women, don't be in a rush. Don't carry your bed with your man, look like a gun. Don't whistle at women, you know she's there run. This generation is in danger. These situations are no strangers. We've seen it all before, beating us down and lifting from the tree. Our bodies drenched in gasoline. Sat on fire and watched us burn, saying, when would these niggas have to learn? Stop being black, especially in America. This nation was killed by our black kids for the rules made for the white skin. Why did they take us from our home? Who gave them the right? And now we can't even fight? Saying our allegations are always dramatic and wrong. Everything isn't about race, but we see this crap every other day. Little black boy playing at the park with a toy gun. Cops pull up, bam, bam, he's done. His entire group is going to the job of the diamond for what? Was he committing a crime? You want to tell me this isn't about race, but if he was a little white boy, he'd still be alive today. Uh, 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 uh,
I was mentored by black men with brown skin who turned yellow at the sight of swollen bellies filled with half of their DNA. I was taught that a woman's vagina is an underground railroad to masculinity. That real men have tunnel vision and treat girls like subway cars. Like nothing more than a space to, uh, to parallel park our genders. A hole to bury seeds and leave orchids in our rear view mirrors. They say you gotta peel a woman like a tangerine, and your job as a man is to chameleon yourself into her trees. Mm. Bite a piece of her fruit and leave the rest hanging crooked and confused. This is an apology to every woman I change colors just to get inside of. See, I haven't stumbled across the definition of a man. But I know that we are hotels that stand a million more stories tall. I know that we carry guitar cases full of phobias, hoping that we can turn our fear into our strongest instrument. I know that our hands break things just as freaking as we can fix them. And we often forget that sexism is a family heirloom that we've been passing down for generations. As men, it is important that we start asking ourselves, what will the boys learn from us? Woo, good job.
Now she has a seed growing inside her. She's sad, but she can't help but grin because the boyfriend chooses her over his poisoned ex-girlfriend. The month goes by and her belly gets big, but for some reason, the bigger she is, the sicker she gets. The boyfriend, unknowing of the poison, believes that the seed is just trying to destroy them. She's lost, lost in this world full of sin. Today is the day that the seed pops out. And, the, uh, and she's sicker than ever, not knowing today will be her last, but maybe it's okay because he's right by her side. As the baby comes out, she closes her eyes. Her heart starts beating, but to his surprise, he hears a cry. The doctors enter the room to bring the news, and the doctors enter the room to bring the news. Son, you're poisoned, and the baby's poisoned too. Oh. Wait. That's how you end it? I'm mad. Yeah, like that, 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 that. Huh? Yeah. That's real. That's real. That's real. Bro, you got it. Come on. You got it, fam. Come on. Look at the silly. Picture us in our underwear. Sweet. <laughs> you got it! <laughs> Listen. Listen. I fight in the stage of the song. I should be heard, but no one wants to discover who I am. Quote, and these are for the people who try to manipulate me and find ways to see around my well-being. I've seen remorse concern. These are the three words you will later learn through your life's experience in slavery. Because those people had the bravery to fight back for what they believed in science. Not the making of tectonic plates, but what we make of each other's summer. Because our science and the slaves of the summer. Technically, this means we're not here of our own free will. We're just a refreshing memory of what those people had to kill in order for us to stand today. Today in this educational system of learning. So take advantage of it while you have it before it's snatched from you like an interception from a football game. Hey. And later in life you will ask, and later in life you will ask, why I didn't do this or that? Now I have to suffer with my bottled up emotions and my antidepressant pain, saying, I science and slaves and something. Hey. Hey. So hateful and so ignorant. 
They are so blinded by the outside that they cannot see that we're the same on the inside. Martin Luther King Jr. once believed that we can walk. No, 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 that was wrong, excuse me. What I meant to say was Martin Luther King Jr. once believed that we can march hand in hand together and yet we are struggling the same struggles we have faced for years. Discrimination, stereotypes, racism, hate crimes, and for what? For what? The color of our skin, where we come from, our gender, the tongue we speak. Regardless of it all, we are the same. We came from the same God, we are the same. We run the same blood, we are the same. We came from the same land, my people, we are the same. And yet, we punish each other because of ignorance and the simple satisfaction of our very unsatisfied lives. Yes, we are free. Yes, we are free, but we have not freed ourselves from the shackles on our ankles. People in my community hear me. Listen <coughs> to the words that I speak. Does it not boggle your mind that we're always at war? Whether it's with a country, within our own country, within our communities, within our homes, within ourselves. Does it not bother you that the only place we can truly and definitely find peace is inside of Webster's Dictionary? Does it not bother you that you as children have been placed into a no peace zone world? <coughs> There are people who gave their lives for us to realize one thing. People like Martin Luther King Jr., people like Abraham Lincoln, people like Malcolm X, and as much, as much as I hate to say it, but if we're in the same predicament, we have been there for 50 plus years, then they died in vain. They died for a goal that will never be reached unless we truly accept into our beating hearts that we are the same. I'm sure someone here has lost a loved one from cancer and illness. Illness does not discriminate. Illness can affect everyone because we are the same. Black, white, orange, blue, purple with stripes, it matters not. We are the same, we are the same. I cannot stress this to you enough. We are the same. And, and if you have listened to anything that I've said on you, and I asked you the simple question of, uh, what is the difference between you and I? You, you will be able to say none because we are the same. To the privacy so to say all the right things to have her go into the all the messages of gold. To put the pieces together and walk away from the world. I never know how this could be so much more of my life. What could be a choice I can make for screaming and spill out all of this? I never know a crime like this could make me so weak. From pushing and pulling and pumping my gun up against her skin, I knew right then and there I was almost to the end. The vault was open and I could see my way to glory. She was screaming out, man, please just spare me. Spare me will be the last thing I intend to do. I'm going to make you pay for all the trouble I went through. She was screaming and pleading to be let go. You'll be all right, no 